This is Zestology. I'm Tony Wrighton. Today, a friend of the show returns and it's X-rated. And I realise that calling any podcast X-rated might be seen as a cynical ploy to get more listeners. But in the case of John Gray, I think it's justified. John is the world's best-selling hardback non-fiction author of all time with his book Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. You will have heard of it and you probably will have read it at some point as well. And John is utterly brilliant. He's been on this podcast three or four times before and he was speaking at this big health festival that I was uh, banging on about recently, a couple of weeks ago, the Health Optimization Summit in London. He was one of the keynote speakers there and did an excellent presentation as well. He did this presentation and everyone afterwards was coming up to me and saying, oh my God, did you see John Gray talk? It was hilarious and brilliant and outrageous all at the same time. And I think that's because John's particular areas of interest at the moment are what can only be described as quite X-rated. It's all to do with relationships. And to me, relationships is probably the most important part of the jigsaw when it comes to your health, energy and wellness. This podcast is all about energy and vitality. And let's be honest, if you haven't got your uh, relationships right, then you're not going to be feeling particularly full of vitality and energy, are you? I should probably tell you where I am. I'm down by the Thames in West London. You can probably hear loads of uh, birds in the background going a little bit crazy. It's the kind of beautiful autumnal morning that gives you plenty of energy. And uh, chatting to John does as well, actually. I I always enjoy chatting to him and I always kind of get a few nuggets that I think, do you know what, I'm going to apply that to my own relationship. And I did when I chatted to him as well. Um, Yeah, it is a bit X-rated but all in the context of having better relationships. So if that's something that you would like to do, if you'd like to improve your relationship with your other half, then let's have a listen to John Gray, friend of the show, without a doubt. And he's back in London. Really good to see him talk live at the Health Optimization Summit. And here he is on Zestology. I'm, I'm recording now. It's great to see you. Great to see you again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's only a few months ago that we caught up in London. It's so, so nice to see you. And I've had loads of people come up to me and say, did you see John Gray's talk? It has set this conference hall ablaze, John. <laughs> what was going on? Everyone's been talking to me about it. <laughs> it was a great talk. I started out by letting them know I'm so happy to be here because you're my tribe. I can say anything I want. You know, sometimes if I build up what you can achieve through making love and through sex and hormonal balance and the states of ecstasy that you can experience, other people like, you know, they feel inadequate when you build that up because they're probably not going to ever be motivated to do what it takes. And this is a group of people that say, you know, personal growth, personal development, biohacking. I talked a lot about how to have great sex all the time uh, or quite regularly and uh, ejaculation control, semen retention. I talked about how to learn to do that as a man. I talked about my own experience. Uh, like when my 20s, I went for nine years without ever releasing semen. And that's the foundation of, of my self-actualization. You know, that's just, the, it's the juice. And multi-orgasmic women, how to raise a woman to different points to help a woman be more multi-orgasmic. I talked about how the biology of stress is such that when you have experience cortisol, uh, the world is stressful, but it doesn't mean you have to be stressed. And that's a cliche. It's how we respond to it. But what I go further with that one is how we respond to it. Is for women, they respond to stress. First of all, we all respond to stress by losing blood flow to the executive part of the brain. So we're now at the mercy of our conditioned responses. And that's already proven. So, but next thing that happens when you have cortisol is you're in stress mode. For women, they feel they have to protect themselves. That is the hormone testosterone, which good she can protect herself but she can't make estrogen or progesterone when she's making testosterone that's a biological fact so this is the bio- biology of stress yeah this is the biology of gender specific stress understand gender specific because stress. when men yes. are under stress their testosterone levels are converting into estrogen mm. so high estrogen is what makes men angry and that's a big ang- takeaway point for men is if you're angry you need to stop talking if you talk when you're angry take action when you're angry or uh, make decisions when you're angry, you're using the limited part of your brain, A. B, you become more angry if you talk about it. And three, you will shut a woman down. 
what women need more than ever is to feel safe. And anger is terrifying to a woman's brain. Whether she knows you're safe or whatever, anger is terrifying to a woman's brain and prevents her from making estrogen. And so estrogen in one part of her cycle is essential for her well-being and to be orgasmic. I mean, a multi-orgasmic woman is making you know, 20 times more estrogen than a man, twice as much estrogen as she normally has during the day. And she has to have access to that. And there's certain hormones that help her increase the estrogen, oxytocin being one. Uh, but also, at certain times of the month, she doesn't need est estrogen. Too much estrogen will actually make her stressed. Oxytocin at those times will actually be stressful to her. So there's no one given thing for every day of the month. After he ovulates, progesterone has to be the dominant hormone. And oxytocin, which is affection, touch, compliments, being, spending time together, uh, actually too much of that will actually raise her estrogen more than her progesterone. That will cause her to be what's called estrogen dominant. And that causes massive depression and anxiety and overwhelm in women. So, you know, women's hormones are complex, and, but not once you understand it. I've simplified it as I do in all my books, and people loved it. They love it. They understand what's going on here. And after her period, that's when her estrogen levels need to build. That's when you want to have romance. Like the five days before ovulation, which is when she's most vulnerable to being pregnant, that's when her body says, do it. <laughs> that's when her body can do it if she has enough oxytocin, which helps to increase her estrogen because women today, modern women, are independent. Independent is the, is the new thing, and that's great. That means women now have the freedom, freedom is fantastic, to be a whole person. That's where you can self-actualize. You know, Maslow talked about self-actualization as being a higher need. Like, I need to always be learning and expressing what I learn. That's my self-actualization. Uh, but that the basis of that is emotional fulfillment. And the basis of my emotional fulfillment is feeling secure and having my survival needs met. So Maslow talked about, it, once you're in a society where your survival and security is pretty much taken care of, not a major threat, uh, then suddenly the emotional fulfillment is a primary need. Mm. And women's primary need for emotional fulfillment is learning how to show, demonstrate caring, empathy and understanding, and respect. These so are, that is what her partner needs. That he do. needs to learn yeah. to provide that for in all the different ways that you can do that. Not that men don't need caring, understanding, and respect. But caring, understanding, respect, and all the things that go along with that actually generate estrogen. And men today do not need more estrogen. We're way too far on our female side because we want to play all the time. That's the estrogen. When you're sitting in your video game, you're watching a sporting event, you're basically making estrogen at that time, drinking beer. And it's okay, some of that. But we've gone way overboard. Yeah, we're, we're play. You know, women go, my husband's lazy. You know, when you have too much estrogen, you have no testosterone. Men lose motivation. They, they don't just get excited. You know, when you see your wife, you don't want to have sex with her. You're tired. Everybody says, I'm so tired. That's because your hormones are out of balance. Your, you know, when you start out in a relationship, because of the newness, your hormones are in balance. And the, it, dopamine, the newness of it stimulates this dopamine, which increases testosterone for men and it increases, if she's feeling safe, which she does in the beginning, increases estrogen in her. So you get to experience what it's like to be with somebody when their hormones are in a really good place. But when the newness goes off, then you don't get that free testosterone estrogen due to the high dopamine stimulation. So men then become addicted to high dopamine stimulation. Women get addicted to high dopamine stimulation, which anything which is dangerous, eating, eating junk food is gonna be a high dopamine stimulator. Arguing and fighting, actually that stimulates dopamine. Oh, yeah. Many people are addicted to drama, addicted to victim feeling, addicted to blaming. These all stimulate estrogen. So if you don't have estrogen from feeling safe and loving, you'll get it by complaining. Well, some people do seem to thrive on drama. I would say yes, women well, and men seem yes, to well, thrive men, no, on this drama. No, it, it's women need the estrogen to come back into balance. And once men are on the estrogen side, they go further and further. Just like if you were to eat a cookie, which is gonna raise your blood sugar, then you're out of balance. And now you're gonna crave another cookie, crave another. So whenever you're out of balance, you tend to go further that way. Yeah. And for men, in the newness of a relationship, their testosterone goes up, you know, much higher than your average testosterone level. And then what they end up doing is, out of trying to be loving, there's a variety of things we do, but we don't know how to rebuild our testosterone. And meditation is one of the most powerful ways to rebuild testosterone, which is basically forget all your problems. And so what we do today is women want to get men to talk about your problems, talk about your feelings. It's the worst thing to do if you want more testosterone. And men need more testosterone. And women say, oh, but then we won't connect. I say, yes, you can. You have to learn how to open up you. You're the woman. You need to share your feelings, and he needs to learn how to listen. 
basic skill. So we can, I mean, I can open up occasionally, can't I? If or, your heart's open. Yeah. You open up first and then you share what's inside. Okay. You don't use a woman to open your heart. Right. You use a woman to take you higher than you can go alone. But she should not be the one to open your heart. You do that yourself. And that could be any time you're upset or stressed, whatever. You recognize, okay, I'm out of balance. Get out of blaming. Focus on what can I do right now to forget what I'm, my blame, my criticism, my complaining. That's all estrogen. So let me get into my testosterone mode, which is do something you're good at and forget what's bothering you. Don't dwell on it. Just say, I'm not going to dwell on it. But you will dwell on it unless you do something to increase testosterone. Now, I had the benefit of being master meditator. So I can just go meditate. It'll always forget all my problems. Testosterone comes up. Then, if I still have emotional issues to talk about, I open up and I share, share that with my partner. But I've already opened my heart to her. Mm. You don't go to your partner when you have anger in your heart, when you're argumentative. Any of that stuff destroys relationships. Oh, yeah. That's just, a recipe for disaster. And, and, if, you, if you go and you, you've got to let that go before you start bringing something out. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And particularly for women, it could sound like, oh, you should never be upset. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that when you're upset, you need to talk about your feelings. That's a big estrogen stimulator. And if when you talk about it, it sounds to him like he's a bad guy, don't talk about it with him. Talk about it with somebody else till you open your heart, feel good about it, then you can let him know. I told him my million dollar phrase, if you want a man to hear your complaints about something, which are your feelings about something, so he can actually hear, start out by saying, look, this is not a big deal. I just want to talk for a few minutes. I just want you to understand what I go through and I know you'll do what you can. Boom, you already feel the reaction. You immediately relax. That's that, so nice. It's That's so nice. Great it's a million dollar frame. Line. It's a million dollar frame. Can I use that line as well? Or is that for that's for women's line? Well, you this shouldn't is not you, a big deal. This is not a big this deal. It's not a big deal. But <laughs> you, you should never say to a woman what she's feeling is not a big deal. You can't do that. Yeah. That that was ruined a long time ago when yeah. psychiatrists realized that most emotional reactions are overreactions. Everything comes from our own imbalance when we're feeling negative. The world's a beautiful place. Even tragedy, you learn to do the best with it. So, but we have this monkey brain that reacts to everything through manipulation. Anger is just trying to intimidate people. Withholding is intimidating people. Shaming people is intimidating. Disapproving of people is intimidating. To change them. See, we want to, everything we do wrong is the monkey brain has these old responses to everything. And when we're in cortisol land, stress land, blood flow stops to the prefrontal cortex where we can actually with practice get beyond all those reactions but even still you never want to dis disconnect the front part of the brain to the middle and the back that's where your sex comes from that's where your love comes from the middle brain and the fourth part of the brain is you know higher awareness everything's okay everything's cool let's figure out how to make make our dreams come true so but the emotions are so so important for women to process out negative emotions and for men to process it out by temporarily forgetting what they're upset about, their heart opens and then to express positive emotions. Like when I make love, I'll probably say, I love you, I love you, I love you, you know, a hundred times, you know, I look in our eyes, that love is so beautiful. A lot of talking about, and men, it's so underrated, this quiet sex stuff. Women need to hear it, you know, they need to feel it, they need to, you know, you can give them a climax just after, you know, a few bit of touches and then say, I love you, and they whisper in their ear with a little breath. But it's amazing how sensitive women are. Men are in such a rush. But we all have ADD today, so where men are like ready to go ejaculate, ready to go ejaculate, rather than go like an hour of wonderful stimulating intercourse up and down, you know? It's just fantastic. It's just, this is unknown. I was just talking to a woman who said, I just loved your whole thing on sex, teaching men how to last longer, because she likes these men from the Middle East, because they basically can last a long time. Women need that penetration. They need pressure on different points in the vagina to go up to nine different orgasms. Then they just, that's the little death the French talk about. They're just like, don't do it, don't do it, I'm dying, I'm dying, you know? They're just like leaving the body kind of a thing. That's total regenerating all the cells in her body when she can feel that surrendered in the presence of her husband. You know, and a lot of guys listening, they go, oh yeah, you know, I want my freedom, I don't want to be in a monogamous relationship. That is so misguided. You see, it's being in a monogamous relationship, if you have fulfilling sex, you're actually making love when you have sex. That's the point of it is love goes away. Love is a high frequency energy and you're out in the stressful world, it just depletes, people suck it out of you. Whenever there's high frequency, low frequency, it just equalizes. So you lose the love living in this world, you burn out. It's sex where you're being totally vulnerable with somebody, physically naked, emotionally naked, mentally open to who they are. That environment allows you to now have sex and you actually increase the love. 
you grow in love. You have more love, but when you lose it, you get it back. That's the whole thing. And you need great sex for that. So many, so many couples, you know, we've got this dead bed thing happening. Half the couples aren't even having sex. The other ones are having kind of boring sex. You know, you see the, the obvious symptom of that is men doing internet porn, which what men don't know is every time they ejaculate, their testosterone levels are going lower and lower unless they ejaculate once a week and they do it with a real woman. Okay, so if you do it with a video, it's like taking cocaine, it changes the brain, a real woman can't turn you on, so you lose interest in real women. You have to have this release thing that goes on. You become zinc deficient, you become energetic deficient, you have an addictive tendency, and the greatest addiction that men can have is the addiction to masturbation. It is just potent. You look at porn and that addiction, it's like giving someone cocaine and then you want more of it, you want more of it. Is like the dangerous thing, and it's not a moral thing, okay? I mean, I've seen porn, I've masturbated the porn, it feels fantastic, what's the problem, you hear? The problem is, is that it stimulates higher dopamine, which desensitizes your dopamine receptors, and then you don't have as much virility and control and lasting ability when you're with a real woman. And the point of sex, and I need to always emphasize this, I don't just have sex, I have sex with the intent to feel more love. Arousal helps you to feel more love, mm -hmm. you see, and there's never the goal orientation of having the ejaculation. It's just the opposite. And the woman needs to be real clear about that. So many women, they go, but I like that ejaculation. You know, I feel him surrender. I say, wait till he can be multi-orgasmic. You see, when he's not ejaculating, it gives him a chance to fully open his heart way beyond this little, you know, yeah. quick little thing. Just interrupting this podcast for one moment to remind you that it is brought to you by Ketoco MCT oil, uh, pretty much the purest MCT oil on the market. If you head to Amazon and you type in Ketoco, so that's Keto with a K-O on the end, you'll find Ketoco MCT oil. It is 99.8% C8 oil delivered to you in a glass bottle and it's non-drip. And non-drip is the kind of holy grail, by the way, of MCT oils, because most of them they just kind of dribble down the side and once you've got it on your clothes that's it you might as well write off that t-shirt because mct oil ain't coming out in the wash so it's ketoco mct oil if you head to amazon and type in ketoco keto with a ko you'll find that you'll find the green powder which has only two grams of net carbs per serving and all sorts of different greens in it including alfalfa and celery cucumber and all the rest of it and only two grams of net carbs and also a collagen powder as well enter the code zestology you'll get 10 percent off and i'd love to know what you think okay now back to the show and and how have the british audiences i mean how do they react to this because obviously i've said that i've had a huge response to this today i've had a lot of people coming up to me and say did he did he hear john's john's talk i always think us brits are a little bit reserved but perhaps we're not and i know you've i think the brits too. are very naughty behind the door do you do you yes yeah, i've heard yeah, that yeah you know, i don't know personally but i've heard they're pretty naughty behind the door yeah so perhaps yeah. we're just we're, we're less reserved than we than we used to be behind we like the door think we are. Behind, behind the, the door. door a lot of kinky yeah. stuff goes on yeah and i'm yeah. not you know kinky stuff everybody to his own but great sex making love is and, and uh, talking about it and talking while you're there you're inside of her and she'll say oh what's that point what oh. are you doing now I really like that that's oh, good yeah. that's good yeah. oh more of that continue continue <laughs> you know some good conversation about that what was that what did you like about that oh, I want you to remember this you know oh that was so good when you did this oh that's something new honey that's what that you know have some conversation oh I like that I like that Oh, good. Do more of that. Put move his hand around. Put it where you want it to be. And just. I mean, you don't want it to be like a radio show while, while during sex. It's tender. It's, <laughs> it's tender love. It's tender love. Yeah. You know, it's it's, it's yeah. having conversation. Yeah. Also helps men have more control because it mm. keeps the blood in other parts of his body. Right. You know. Right. And then I, I yeah. teach the brick technique, where you practice with a brick and you wrap it with a towel and put it between your thighs and just practice pumping. And you just pump for 20 minutes. And you build up to like 20 minutes of really fast pumping. Okay. The muscles build up and then walk afterwards. I show everybody on stage, you'll, swat, you'll swagger. Your hips will move almost like you're a woman model. You loosen those, all those muscles mm -hmm. up. Then that allows the, the tension to go away very quickly as you're becoming aroused. So your penis isn't so overstimulated where okay. it has to, you know, if you, if, you, if, if you do a lot of masturbation and you do a lot of porn, your penis is going to become so sensitive that you'll get a little roused and you want to ejaculate. 
it's very hard to so you got to build you got to get those muscles retrained to be super relaxed mm. because masturbation is only one goal it's not to love somebody yeah it's to release it's to release and you've been doing it ever since you're a little kid so so you have to like retrain and so you can also retrain by just doing solo and if you're getting, not doing anything getting the break out well so you get to break out every day till that yeah. whole thing loosens up okay yeah. then you don't have to do it then having sex with that is, yeah, yeah, you know, you're moving, yeah. you're, you're moving those your pelvis. The way you do is once you get the pelvis open, you're moving along inside of a woman, and you get to the point where you see if you go through excitement, you're going to ejaculate. Then you just basically relax, keeping your penis inside, and you do that movement. And that movement is, is a pelvic pump, and it will pump the semen it up instead of needing to be released out. It, the semen is an energy. I don't, I always learn something new every time I chat to you. <laughs> You've been chatting to the Guardian today as well, or the Observer? I did, paper? I did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and how are they reacting to all this? I don't think I told them this detail. Okay, this is an exclusive for Zestology. Yes, yeah, yeah this is good. like extra technique. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is. Uh, one good book on this, because I don't have a book on that part of it. I have a book on Mars Venus in the Bedroom, which is great. But I wrote it at a time where this was just not acceptable to talk about. But today it is. And the reason it's acceptable to talk about is because it has now become a huge problem. So you can only address things in couples that are a problem. Ironically, my new book, Beyond Mars and Venus, I couldn't teach before because it talks about when men are more like women and women are more like men. That's what every couple that came out came to me and all, almost every couple have been married for quite a while and had problems. They were in role reversal. Mm -hmm. You know, she's busy, overwhelmed, can't relax, he's just lazy, sitting back, he's got low testosterone. So what I had to do is teach him gender differences to bring him back into balance. Now I can write a whole book about it because not everybody was in role reversal then. Today, culture's in role reversal, the sexual confusion, yeah, I mean, That resonates neutrality. so much yeah. when you talk about that. Yeah. So many people are going through that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and why? It's a spiritual transformation. The world has gone through a big spiritual shift where you have higher consciousness, uh, then suddenly your emotional needs become more important, A. Higher consciousness, you become aware of spirit, whether you call it that or not. Uh, you, the spirit part of us is, is both male and female, whether you have a male body or a female body. So I can be very feminine, you know, I, I'm full, full of love and happiness and joy, and I also have very discipline, even having sex without ejaculating, it's a massive discipline. It strengthens you so much, I only eat one meal a day. I'm disciplined, you know, I, I work very hard when I work and I play and enjoy myself in balance. Day. Just one meal a day. Oh, yeah. really? I have a cup yeah. of coffee in the morning, I drink a cup of yeah. green tea during the day, and then I'll... Uh, you feeling good on it? Fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah. I feel I like I the should... last time we chatted about stem cells as well. As, and uh, the, I, did, I knew you did a bit of intermittent fasting, but I didn't know it was one meal a day. Yeah, one meal a day. Yeah. It, it, you know, I think uh, it's a secret to life, which is uh, meditate more, eat less, and have more sex. And when you have sex, make love. Uh, the love is everything. And I was mentioning about the thing about, you know, the people who are poly and have lots of partners, they really just don't know how to keep the passion alive. And so that's their only option. And I'm not judgmental of that. I just go that it tells me you don't know how to have sex. Because if you know how to have sex with your partner and you have good communication with your partner, these skills that I teach, sex is fantastic. And so you feel no desire to have sex with anybody else. I mean, basically my freedom that I have and have had is I don't have to lust after anybody. I got it, you know? It's kind of like when I, when I finally bought my house. I have a beautiful home in Mill Valley, California. But prior to that, I was like lusting after, oh, he has that house, and oh, they have that house, and now I have the perfect house. I mean, my house is so fantastic. I have no, I can't even find one, you know? I have no hotels better than my house. It's on a mountain, it's got a private drive, it's got a pool, it's got gardens everywhere. Spectacular place, it was my dream place, I got it. Now I look at other houses, I have no desire, no lust, like, oh, it's a beautiful house, that's a beautiful house. When you have what you need, you don't long for it elsewhere. So a sign of eyes straying is, is you're not getting your needs met. And, and you could be with the perfect woman, just not know the skills, and you'll feel that, or if you ejaculate too much. You know, the great thing I talked about today was, is uh, this wonderful Japanese study that showed that when, if you're married and you have a relationship, or you have a girlfriend, whatever, you have sex on Saturday, and then for six days, you don't have sex, you don't ejaculate. You can have sex, but you can't ejaculate. On the seventh day, your testosterone levels double. And testosterone wow. is everything to mm -hmm. men. And that's why this whole knowledge is so important because you know they always blame testosterone, too much testosterone for 
you know, aggression and anger and wanting to hurt inside of men. Actually, it's low testosterone, high estrogen. Now, those men typically have higher testosterone levels, but as soon as they feel out of control, the body will put them in a stress mode, cortisol gets produced, and testosterone converts into estrogen. So now they're flooded with estrogen and they feel emotion. All emotion is yin energy, it's estrogen. And so it's a wonderful thing for men to get that, oh, if I'm angry, I'm going women. I want to be a man, you know, it's as clear as day. And you know, some people say, yeah, he wants to be macho. I go, no, macho men are these arrogant guys who demand obedience. That's on your female side. You know, I want more respect. I want more. See, women are the ones who actually need respect more. Men are the ones who need appreciation more. That's what the cultures, the old cultures, were set in a certain way to keep men's testosterone healthy and women's female hormones healthy so that they could make babies. And that was the culture. That was a, a culture of survival and security. We're now in a culture where emotional fulfillment has become a primary need. So, so the, the old culture would be the, the, the caveman going out to... It'd be my parents. It's not the old culture. Okay, it's so man we're, makes we're the money. Old, old, we're, we're talking, talking about the man okay, makes yeah. the money and the woman makes, raises the house, cleans the house, the kid takes care of the kids, maybe has a little part-time job. Yeah. You know? And you're not suggesting going back to that. No, I'm saying that that's the old culture. It yeah. doesn't work anymore. Yeah. But we don't have a new culture that will support men being both masculine and feminine, but balanced in their masculine. Yeah. And women being masculine and feminine, but balanced in their feminine. They, they lose their feminine when they're working all day. But if they have a personal life, when they leave the jaw office and they have a personal life that actually increases estrogen, then during the day, they're making more estrogen even if they're in a very testosterone stimulating job. They have to anticipate, like if I was gonna go somewhere and get a million dollar check, I would already feel like a millionaire because we anticipate and our hormones will change right away at what we anticipate. Anticipation is so, so important. And all it takes is for a few bombs to go off in a relationship, women anticipate it's not safe, they're not gonna make as much estrogen. Yeah. They can't have orgasms, they can't enjoy sex. And the whole world has changed. Here's a dramatic shift. Most every man out there in the Western world when he has sex, he wants his wife to have an orgasm. He wants that. His happiness is complete when she has an orgasm. Now that was not true 100 years ago, even 50 years ago. Men didn't care about women's orgasm, but we're now more empathetic. If she's not happy, why would I be happy? It'll be empty. I, but when men were just masculine, when we were just feminine, that was it. Men to have their orgasm, they're done, and women just did it as obligation. It was something women submit themselves to. I mean, do you want to have sex with a woman who submits herself to you? And guess what, guys? Anytime you're fantasizing those women on, online, they're submitting themselves to you. They don't want to be doing that. Mm. They all wish they had a husband and a house and could raise children. That's what they deeply want. Okay. And maybe they don't all want to have children, but they want love. Everybody wants love deep down inside, and they're not going to get it getting paid for sex. So it's all an illusion. And the more you're an illusion, the more sex produces higher levels of cocaine, the cocaine levels of dopamine. Reality has oxytocin, has serotonin, has touch, has love, estrogen, and testosterone. So everything stays in balance. And suddenly you're just, uh, internet sex is just our stranger sex. It's straight dopamine. There's yeah. no, yeah. so your testosterone levels, you get a spike of it, then it drops lower. Really? Yeah. Ejaculate once a week, men. Don't masturbate. Don't do it until the next, until the seventh day. That then creates a zoom of estrogen in her. Women can feel your energy, okay? If your testosterone goes up and your desire, you also have more patience. These guys that are hungry to get to ejaculation, hungry to have sex, that's all low testosterone. High testosterone is you're like, all right, I got this, you know, and you got time, you can relish, you can ravish her body, you know, this is delicious. And the main priority for a man in that state her happiness is his happiness. Now, John, we haven't got too much time left and the building site outside seems to be going particularly crazy. Um, I've asked you this question before, but I'm gonna ask you again for two questions. What is one book that you would recommend? Might be something that you've read recently or something that's had a profound impact on you. And what is one tip that you have for living with more energy and vitality? It might be different for men and women or it might be the same and neither is absolutely fine. I would do one tip for each. I think yeah. both men and women should read the book Why Men, Why men Are the way they are. Brilliant book by Warren Farrell. Why men are the way they are. Very much deeper than my message. I'm, I'm very easy to understand. He really has all the academics and the depth and the history and the society. Oh, brilliant guy. So why men are the way they are. Warren Farrell. 
Uh, one tip is the definition of a good relationship. Good, and I didn't invent this, I just love it. Uh, a definition of a good relationship, and the person who invented it said definition of friendship. I say it's a good relationship. And it's uh, a, a good relationship is delighting in the presence of your partner with no agenda to change them. Mm. If we could just learn the power is in not trying to change others. The power is in changing ourselves, coming in back into hormone balance, and then you feel more love in your heart, and then having the knowledge to give your partner the love that increases their testosterone if they're men, and the kind of love that increases estrogen if they're women. And so you give now, with wisdom, you give more to your partner, and you get more back, because you brought out the best in them. Anytime you're trying to change your partner, you'll get less and less from your partner. That's inevitable. It's always true. Every woman who's not getting what she wants only comes in to say, how do I change him? How do I change him? Every man has an unhappy wife. He's always telling her she's wrong for being unhappy. And we, we're just like addicted to changing other people to give us what we want. Nothing wrong with wanting more. It's learning how to get it. And if you're not getting it, you're wrong. Yeah. And talk, listen to somebody who is getting it. And you know, sometimes people say, how, how do you know what I need? I said, because I'm getting it and I'm really happy and so is my wife. And you're not happy, so you clearly don't know what you need. If you did, you'd realize you have it now. Okay? You have it now. And that's hard for people to get because they always want to say, well, I'm not getting what I need because my partner. I said, no, no, you have the power to be happy and fulfilled. And you have the power to actually experience higher level of love by being unconditional on your love. And as a result of that, you will get more in your relationship. But, you know, I said to my whole audience, you know, who has the power to be happy? Who's responsible for your happiness? They all raise their hand until they get married. And then they say, my partner is responsible. <laughs> They're not doing a good job. And yeah. so it's just, we have to learn. This emotional fulfillment is a new knowledge on this planet. We've never had such a strong need for it. And this group of people, which is an amazing group of people, they're already at the place where they're ready for self-actualization. They want to biohack for the greatest. I can talk about semen retention and they're not all freaked out about it. They're like, how do I do it? You know, this sounds great. That's where the power really comes in. It's when you can balance your masculine and feminine. That's the Asians would talk about that as the yin and the yang. You balance those two forces together so they both feel nurtured and supported. And what emerges is the flow. People talk about the flow. It's genius, it's creativity. All those things happen when the balance is there. And you know, all the geniuses in the past, when they were creating, there was a balance. They're very androgynous type people generally, often gay, because they have more male and female sides. And you'll see that throughout history. But the problem is they're not able to sustain it. Once a man goes to, when he's in his discipline, and he's also expressing his genius as his female side comes in, then after he expresses it, he tips too far to the female side. It's too much, it feels so good to be just having fun. And so what allows like musicians to stay in the zone is they have such discipline to practice, to plan, to do this, to work together with others. You know, it takes a lot of masculine energy. For me, you know, I have so much fun on stage, but you know, it's the basis of 20, you know, 40 years of, of discipline study, 25 books I've written. Anybody tries writing, writing a book, people always say to me, oh, how do I find the time? I have three daughters and a wife and I travel around the world and I found the time, you know, it's called, you squeeze it in, you know, yeah, it takes yeah. discipline to do that. And, and so you have discipline is your masculine side, having fun is your female side. You got to both. And all creative people will have that. Yeah. And, but they can't always hold it. So they have very dysfunctional lives. Very dysfunctional. You see it again and again, the craziness that goes on in their life. The, the men have all this drama and addictions. You know, most of the writers were all addicted to something. But see, the drug gives them a temporary window where their hormones can go into balance. Your dopamine levels shoot up really high, then suddenly your hormones come up like you've just fallen in love. And now you're in love with your work. I mean, I'm always in love with my work. I look at who, I said, how did I write that? Who wrote that? You know, <laughs> beautiful. You know. John, as always, I've, I've learned plenty. Um, <laughs> I, it's a great treat to have you in London to, mm. twice in such a short amount of time. This conference was so much fun. It's for been me. great, hasn't oh, it? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, it was packed out, I believe, in your in yeah. Your it tour. was packed, and I got a beautiful standing ovation. It was yeah. really quite wonderful. sensational. You know, as a speaker, I know certain things I can do to get one, but. I like it when I don't try to get it at all, and I just like, it happens. And with this group, they're all seekers of the highest, you know, that's motivational. I have potential, I want to realize that potential. 
It's nice yeah. to get you experts like yourself over here for a change. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we, we love coming over to the states, but yeah. you know, I mean, it's a long way for us to come. So it's yeah. nice to get you here. But if you do come to San Francisco yeah. twice a year, I teach a three-day class, which oh, yeah. is transform life transformational. Um, I used to do it more, but now I do it in China more. Uh, do you? Chinese people love this stuff, yeah. you know. I don't have to work hard to get people to come. You know, Americans, oh, we already know it all. They know, <laughs> they don't know it. They're having so many problems. Yeah. And it's kind of easier for them because they don't have this whole stigma of men and women are supposed to be the same. They just, they know we're different, they just don't know how. You know, the, the women, if people look at their, their history, they don't blame men for it. They blame communism. If they're the type of people that would come to a personal growth seminar, yeah. and the, the government suppressed them, and and now so they don't blame men for suppressed lives. Both men and women were like slaves, and so then this is now we're all free. But when they're all free, women become like men. You know, everybody wants money, money, and but they don't know. So they're missing the love. You know, they can't enjoy their money, and they, it's a, so that's my group I talk to there, and it's very transformational. Good. Well, we have lots of listeners in America who will be interested. Yeah, um, and, and probably quite a few in China. Yeah. Not, not quite so many, I don't think, but maybe some. <laughs> okay, the um, John, really great to see you, as oh. always. Thank you so much. I do always learn a lot every time. I think I'm going to mark this podcast as X-rated. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, too bad. <laughs> or maybe, yeah, more people will watch it. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a cynical plot yeah. to get people to listen. That's right. okay. um, but yeah, anyway, thank you so much, John. Great to see you again. We'll, we'll see you soon, hopefully. I'm looking Cheers. forward to it. Thank yeah. you. Time to catch your breath after John Gray on Zestology. On top form as usual, absolutely brilliant. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got a little, a few little ideas for what you could apply to your own life on gender specific relationship advice. And uh, yeah, thanks to John. Thank you for listening to Zestology as well. That's the last of my Health Optimization Summit podcasts, but um, very much enjoyed doing them and uh, made some new friends and reconnected with some existing friends at that summit as well and hopefully there will be one of those next year as well in which case I'll see you then in fact I think they're selling tickets already early bird tickets I think it's about half price so that might because it's quite expensive if you get in there early it's probably a lot less expensive so might be worth getting in there now that is it from Zestology brought to you by Ketoco MCT oil and Ketoco greens powder only two grams of net carbs if you head to uh, Amazon and search for Ketoco, so that's Keto with a K-O on the end, you will find Ketoco Greens Powder, only two grams of net carbs. So many different vegetables go into this thing that I can't, I can barely tell you what's in there, but there's just loads of veggies. There's also, what's quite nice, a little bit of green tea in there, so it's best to take in the morning because it gives you just a, a slight little caffeine boost. And... Um, Good for the soul and good for your fitness as well, I think. Ketoco uh, Greens Powder and, of course, the MC2 oil is out there as well. Right then, gorgeous morning down here, but I'm now peeling off uh, away from the river to the nearest coffee shop to look at my laptop and not the sunshine. But I've done a bit of sunbathing now already today. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.